Hey, what's going on everyone? I'm hanging out with Joseph the Mink Man. I'm in Salt Lake and I'm really excited to meet you, man. Everybody on my channel has been saying, you gotta meet Mink Man, he's training a uh, monitor. And I kind of just wanted to get to know you, man, and see what it's all about. You've got some beautiful animals. Sure. And just in the little time we've been talking, we haven't even gone back yet, but just in the little time we're talking, I learned so much. You got the, the Dutch Shepherd here, who's really well behaved. She listens to you. So yeah, you've been into dog. training animals your whole life. Yeah, that's that's my thing. I love to, to train, like to basically shape an animal to do something, usually a task. Okay. I'm not really that intrigued with like tricks. Like, oh, my dog can like stand up and yeah. like, like for me, because I kind of come from a working animal background with a, you know, grandfather being a cowboy and he trains cattle dogs that have a job and he trains uh, cattle horses that have a job and he, like they all had jobs. Cool. So that's kind of my mentality is I find a need and I try and find an animal that can fulfill that need and teach that animal to do you know, different tasks okay. to fulfill that need. Pretty, can cool. we check it out? Yeah. I'd love to see your inner sanctum here. So this is a little guy named Boone. <laughs> he is... Wow. So mink are super, super, super uh, difficult to raise. Uh, it takes a lot of time, a lot of effort to get them like this, where you could just handle them safely. No way. So even if you get one from a baby, people think, oh, you get anything from a baby, it'll be nice. Not necessarily. Mink take a ton of time, effort, and know-how to get handleable like this. And so doing more than one at a time is very difficult. So I just do one at a time and the rest are just kind of in a mob. Okay. And they're like, they're, they're trained to come when I call and they're accustomed to my presence, but they're like semi-wild. And, and if you compare them to other animals, they're completely crazy wild, but for a mink, they're semi-wild. <laughs> so what would you do with this particular animal as far as a, a not a trick, but like a task? So uh, one of the difficult things to teach a mink to do is to retrieve what they kill, what okay. I call caching. So they catch something and they bring it back to their little box. Um, that's very difficult and time consuming to teach. So I just pick one individual, pour a lot of time into it, get him hand tame like this and teach him to retrieve like that. Oh, so I handle him like almost all day. Um, as much as I can, I'll go to Home Depot to pick stuff out. I've got a mink with me. I go, I'm sitting at the computer editing. If he's somewhat sane, I'm, I've got him with me. Really? So I'll go get him on a walk, get him swimming, get him really tired. So he'll sleep while I'm editing. Wow. Um, when he's little, it's easy. But right now, I mean, look, he's like a little live wire, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. And he's at the, the peak of his energy. And they're just like, ah, I got a bite. I got a bite. Yeah, I got to yeah. play. I got a bite. I got to run. I got to play. I got a bite. <laughs> and that's all they do. And then they crash. So that is incredible. He's adorable. I mean, there, I do cute. love, uh, isn't it fun? I love seeing like, I, I don't keep many mammals. Um, actually I only had a cat and I have these children behind me. Those yeah. are the only mammals yeah. we keep. Um, but they are cute. It's just, I know the difference between a reptile and a mammal, uh, yeah, the huge. energy metabolism is just incredible. Uh -huh. Now I notice over back here, you got that beautiful aquascape yeah. hunt. Let's we, go show it to you. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. So oh, I love the way they run, man. It's so cute. So the fence is is like half done. Okay. So this is kind of like that. This is a beautiful pond, by the way. The guy, yeah, yeah Aquascape awesome. always does an amazing job with their water features. This is awesome. Now, you guys built into this something unique, um, like these little tunnels, huh? Yeah. So, so they're, it's awesome. They're little tunnels going through the, the inner workings of this pond here. What's their lifespan? Oh, that's depends on how lucky they are. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're In very, very, you know, fragile, small, reckless animals. <laughs> so realistically, their lifespan's like a few years. Okay. Potentially, if you lock them in a room and never let them experience anything, like they can live up to like eight to, to 10 years. That's awesome. Um, if everything goes right. In the wild, their lifespan is roughly, uh, you know, two to three, maybe four years. Oh, it's beautiful. This is awesome, man. This is exactly the reason I love having these water features for the animals because it's more engaging for the animal because it's more naturalistic. This is exactly what this animal would be 
searching yeah. for. Do you do anything like, do you hide any food items kind of in the, um, you know, in the rocks, crevices and stuff like that? That's awesome. <laughs> yep. If you look, they're swimming around. <laughs> oh, okay. So fish. it's the fish. There's awesome. There's a food item. <laughs> <laughs> the other ones are not visible right now because they're hiding. There's just big fish in there. That is really cool. That's what I love about, um, I guess, the internet and YouTube is that there are people uh, that have all a myriad of interests and we all get connected you know what i mean with animals and such uh so it's just so cool and i'm able to experience this with you man i'll tell you what uh i love the minx but i think maybe we should head on over and meet raptor i know man. you guys have been waiting for it he's um, he's sleeping so oh uh, okay uh, uh, he's got a burrow Okay. We won't be able to get him out until he's like awake and ready. All right, well, so, we have the, the beauty of editing here. So we're going to allow Raptor to sleep, and then you'll see Raptor here momentarily. Abracadabra. Poof. All right, so uh, Raptor seems like he's awake, and uh, we're going to see what kind of mood he's in. But I'm pretty excited to meet this guy. He's a, like Slinky, he's another famous monitor on YouTube. Uh, so it's gonna be interesting to see what Joe's got going on and you'll notice that we're simulcasting our YouTube channel So you guys can watch this on my channel and for a different point of view go on and check out Mink Man uh, It's Mink Man, right? Just the Mink, Mink Man on it, YouTube? Joseph Carter the Mink Man, but okay. yeah, look up Mink and it's... You're it. Almost only thing All right, let's up. do it, man. This is cool. Look at this! La... Little Largus monitor here. This is a cool situation you got here. I've watched a couple of your videos natural earthen substrate so it allows it to do its natural behavior of digging yep and uh different basking levels or different heat levels i would imagine and just hides yeah very cool yeah and they're they're very very uh confident lizards a lot of times people will be like oh you need to give him hiding spots blah blah blah, blah. he digs his own hiding That's spot it. Yeah. and he will not use any hides that I set up in here. Like he frankly will not. Well, it's to so you feel more comfortable. I just leave it open. It. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I customize it the way he likes. If he was if he was obsessing over a hide I gave him, I'd give him more. But he frankly doesn't use them. He just digs his own burrow and that's his hide. Wow. And he he digs constantly. He reshifts things around. I occasionally will go in as you see, break things up and and let him redig it. Yeah, this needs to be rebroke up real good because it's got some clotted parts and dry parts and wet parts and mix it all up. I need to get in and do that with a shovel. But he does a lot of mixing on his own because he's constantly burrowing. Even if you didn't touch it, he'll redig a new burrow and bury the old one wow. on a regular basis. You know these Argus monitors. It's funny that you chose Argus monitor as the monitor for you to kind of train. Mm -hmm. um, the Argus monitors have been thought of as very almost mammalian in so many ways. Mm -hmm. um, they're very intelligent. They do that tripoding. They they kind of peek up and look around. So it's it's really cool that you just gravitated towards this. Was that part of the plan? Yeah, so I did a lot of research. I'm not a, once again, I'm not a reptile expert, not a monitor expert right. by any stretch of the imagination, but I do a lot of research. And so I researched all the different species available. I mean, I would've got a perennial if they were available. Yeah. It's not realistic, yeah, right? Right. right? But, um, you got good taste. He's the cousin of the perenni, the smaller cousin of the perenni, and they're very, very similar. They're both highly uh, predatory against other lizards. They're both, uh, you know, out in more arid, open, and very active, active, active hunters. So as far as what they've researched, they're the most active reptile that's ever been researched enough to know that. Cool. Right? So more active than any of the other monitors, any of the other reptiles in the world, or the Argus monitors. And then, They're known to travel for as much as seven hours a day. Well, that's incredible. But think about it. If, if an animal is active longer, especially a cold-blooded animal, they're going to need more brain, more mm -hmm. brain power. Um, more activity means more a higher metabolism. And monitors, in my opinion, in my experience, because I might be a reptile expert, but I hesitate to say I'm, you know, no one can know it all. For sure. And I approach things in that way, which is why I wanted to talk to you, because you may be finding things out that people that are so focused on monitors are too, their egos are too big to like take in new information. Mm -hmm. And the best thing to do is to listen to all information and make sense of it on your own. But I'm interested to see what you're able to do with this animal and just really, just 
the calmness of this animal right now while we're here. And you talked about confidence. Yeah. This animal does not care that we're here right now. And that's the other thing about the species. So they're very active, very, very highly driven for prey and food. Okay. So that's, so the one of the, th the biggest things about a training an animal isn't just their intelligence. I mean, that's cool, but actually what's way more important than intelligence is drive. Okay. So if an animal can be motivated, it doesn't, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say it doesn't matter, but how intelligent they are is, is, is very secondary. Okay. If you're very, very motivated to do something, so let's say that Malinois out there, she could mm -hmm. be dumb as a post and I could teach her easier than most intelligent dogs because she's very, very motivated. She really, really wants to play. Huh. And because she's, she, even if she was dumb, she is super smart, but let's say she wasn't. Let's say she was super, super, super dumb, like the dumbest dog on the planet. But that high motivation, to, I really, really want to play ball. I really, really want to bite something and wrestle with it. That's so exciting to me. I could teach her easier than a smart dog that's not motivated because I have something she really, really wants. Right. If you do this, I'm going to give it to you. She'll figure out what this is. Makes sense. Right? So with these lizards, they're very, very driven. They're, they're one of, if not the most, as far as re uh, normally held in captivity, driven uh, uh, reptile out there, or, or monitor, I should say specifically, but probably reptile. I, I would say that's probably the case. Maybe, I, I don't know about Well, crocodilians. monitors, by and large, I would agree with you there. Very, they, very they're very true. active, and they're the most active, in my opinion, of the lizards, and highly intelligent. Yeah. Uh, again, it doesn't matter, but... So you know. that intelligence, especially in the reptile world, is very helpful because... I mean, no offense, I mean, they're very low on the spectrum of right, intelligence, right? right? Yeah. So having that intelligence is important in the case of, of reptiles because they're, they're pretty limited in that category. But he's got the intelligence and he's got the drive, most importantly, to want to do something. And they're very confident lizards. So you might have another one that's driven and, and motivated, but they're so nervous that they're too busy hiding to come out and feed. Like, gotcha. let's say a Timor monitor or right. one of these tree monitors. Oh, they really, really want to eat, but they're so scared they're not... Because they could become prey themselves. They're not willing to do it. These guys are very confident, very driven, very physically athletic. So like an Asian water monitor would have been a lot easier to do this with as far as, you know, they're, they're confident, they're easy to handle, um, comparatively much easier to handle, things like that. But their food drive isn't quite there. And the main thing that was holding me back from the Asian water was their athletic ability just is not there. They're both there. Right, comparison. copy that. Yeah. Uh, when they're younger, as juveniles, they're a lot quicker, but they just, in my, and I'm not, I'm not saying they're slow. You have to realize what I'm comparing them to. Gotcha. Compared to these, they're very slow and awkward in comparison. And these are in the family of the fastest reptiles in the world. The Perenni, the, the uh, San Goanna, and the Argus Monitor or, or uh, yellow spot monitor, whatever you want to call it. They are the fastest and they're all very close cousins. Hmm. Um, and so yeah, anyway, that's why I selected that species um, was for that drive. Now he's, he is probably having an off day. So cool. We got him up a little bit early. He normally gets fed quite a bit later in the day. So I do not expect him to do all that great, but let's see if he's, uh, he's willing to come out and say hi. All right. Um, and the way he's acting right now, he's not even thinking food. He's like, I just woke up, dude. <laughs> but let's see what he thinks. He is an Argus, so. So these guys have such high food drag, you have to be careful about touching it. See, I just touched the, the, the Dubia. He might grab my finger. So I got to make sure he doesn't sniff this finger um, because there's a chance he'll grab it and try and eat it. And I've had him literally grab my finger and sit and try and swallow it for several minutes before he realized it wasn't food. And the problem is his blood, you see him look at the camera. I don't know if I want to grab that. That camera is too close. Hey, you grabbed the wrong thing, bud. Here, let's drop it on the floor. Look up, look up, look up. You're not looking, look. There's a lot of action going on. Look, dude, look. Look, look. He's like, I don't that's right by the camera. I don't like the camera. Oh, no, he did it. Good job, buddy. I'd say he's, uh, Pretty awesome. So how old is he? He was born in October. Okay, yeah, so not quite a year yet. Because they'll get a little they'll get about four foot. He's like, I'm too interested in the camera. Good job. <laughs> That's awesome. Good job. Now you know, I actually have had different experience, and this might be sp specific to the species, but you're talking about how to get a super aggressive food drive. Um, and what happens here? 
with my monitors, um, uh, with my water monitors and with, I've been, I don't know if you've seen videos, uh, I've hand fed croc monitors. Yeah. Now it's risky, but I noticed that my monitors know the difference between my fingers and the food item. And sure. even, even if I have scent of rodent or fish or something like that, but maybe it's just this guy's yeah. young and he's very energetic. I've seen that. I've seen that with lots and lots of species. Yeah. Try it with an Argus. Let me know how okay. it goes. Cool. Fair now, enough. That's why I said it might be specific. That's what, that's what's great about this communication, yeah. bud. And I'm not I trying to say them. I know. This is literally the first one I've ever had. I don't know. But every other Argus guys, they agree. They're like, dude, they'll tag you. Okay. And I don't know they Argus. And yeah. I'm not saying they will tag you every time. I've, I've, I have feed him off the palm of my hand occasionally. And there's like, he'll eat. He's eaten from my fingers, yeah. but it's it's just it's a matter of time. They are so food driven. It's just a matter of time gotcha. for an accident. Okay, cool. Now, could I probably get over it and work him through it? Sure, but I, you know, I have enough bites on a regular yeah. basis. I'm just gonna use tongs. Like yeah, makes sense, dude. I'm with you. I'm with you. And you know what? I use tongs too. Yeah. But I was just, you know, for me, it was just cool that I, I could be around Slinky, throwing him a rat, and then he comes up and he'll he's sniffing in my pocket. He's looking around. But he doesn't bite my hand, and it's the old "don't bite the hand to feed you," you know, yeah. which is great. And I think but, it's I think it's probably possible, and I might do it as I you know as he matures and things like that. Okay. We'll see. I'm I've just um, I've seen his prey reaction when he gets turned on, and he just tags stuff. Right. And you really don't want him associating your hand with the thing that of gives course. food, because if you look at these tongs, he spends so much time oh, yeah. attacking these yeah. tongs because they bring him food. Gotcha. That. I just don't see that being my finger. <laughs> no, as I a, agree. It's a fun thing. And it's because they bring a food. I mean, if I stick them up here, there's a good chance he'll just bite them just because they're here. Like there's not even food on it. Yeah, look at that. See, and that's because he, he associates these things with food. They have a little bit of a food scent. And imagine that being your finger while he's figuring yeah, out no, that it's, it's not food. Monitors, pull, pull. you know. And he's just tiny, but those teeth are razor, razor sharp. Wow. And uh, it's not going to cause a lot of damage, no. But you're going to bleed all over the place. It's and not pleasant. And again, it's reinforcing bad behavior from him. And he frankly gets excited when he tastes your blood. Wow, interesting. He, he, he gets more turned on when he tastes your blood. So I, yeah. I, I love this lizard though. He is so cool. Um, he looks like he's pretty good on the food. Do, do you want to take him outside? It's up to you. Yeah, let's take him outside. All right, mate. Um, okay, we got mink, so we need to go take him in the front. Okay. Let me grab a couple more bugs and let's go out front and, and turn him loose outside and see what he does. So cool, man. And one comment I get all the time, especially by reptile people is that whistle doesn't mean jack he okay does, he's just seeing what you're offering him yada, right yada, yada. right he will come out of his hole cannot see me cannot smell anything when i whistle well he will come around corners when i whistle so like people love to they think they know, they really don't know I'll, I'll back about. you up on that because i can walk towards the cage slinky will be in his hide and i go slinky and he comes out he pokes his head out so the animal is they do here <laughs> Just the fact he's hanging out at such a young age and not trying to scurry away is pretty good. Yeah, don't jinx me. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Don't jinx me. Nah, he's fine. Huh. He's still a wild animal and you have to realize that he's a wild animal. Yep. And a visitor coming over is the greatest opportunity for them to make a fool of you, so. Well, I'll uh, hang back a little bit there, Joe. Okay, so we've been practicing this routine in the spotlight where I approach something that we can see on the ground and then he goes after it. So I'm gonna kind of play out that routine, but obviously we don't have a spotlight, it's just daylight. Ah, it landed upside down. Just my luck. Want me to flip it? Yeah, go ahead and flip it over. I'll flip it over. All right. He's like, nah, this is too weird. You see that? He sees it. There he goes. Another one is 
You're okay. Good job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot going on, and they do. Oh, well, that's pretty normal. He usually kind of does a little flinchy thing. Yeah, let's, let's do a little male. They're a little faster. You see that male? He's like, nah, I'm weirded out by that camera. Look at the male. Oh, do you see it? He's running in circles for you and everything. Go get him. Good job. Wow. Good job. And the easiest time to pick him up is while he's swallowing. Yep. And I missed that little window of opportunity, so he did a little flinch, but he's he's fine. He's not he's not going to be or at least not for a while. I hear they calm down a bit as they mature. They do because they they tend to think they're no longer prey. Yeah. They get a little bit more mature and they get more sure of themselves. So that's why I was impressed. I, and I like the way, you know, you're very gently going to grab them because you're you don't want to grab them you want him to have a positive feeling of eating yep. and then a gentle lift. So he, that's the repetition you're talking about, right? And for a while there, I had to just completely stop picking him up. So I brought him out for a while and he would, he would go down and I would pick him up real gentle like that. And he started actively avoiding my hand. Okay. Even coming out of the enclosure, he would jump over my hand to land on my arm. Wow. Cause he saw the hand as the thing that picked him up. So for a while there, I wasn't picking him up at all. I was actually just, I take him out in the backyard where he can't really go anywhere anyway. And if he didn't respond to the food call, I'd, I'd offer him food to come to me. He's like, nope, I see the wild, I'm gonna go run. Yeah. I would just go take a little pipe, put it on the ground. He would naturally be like, oh, nice little dark hiding spot. I'm a little bit nervous. Go in there, pick up the pipe, take him inside. So he didn't ever associate my, or not ever, I shouldn't say, but he was, I removed that association with picking me up. I'm kind of nervous, don't do that. And then I, once he, got accustomed to the coming and eating thing while he was eating i'd pick him up he was too distracted to be nervous and then now he's he's getting better so i think eventually i'll be able to just pick him up yeah. but yeah i had to be aware of the fact that i was obviously creating a little bit of fear a little bit of interest anxiety I mean, fear is probably a strong word a little bit of anxiety um when i picked him up and so i had to be aware and that's the thing you to be an animal trainer you have to constantly be adapting to that animal this method is not working you need to change it this thing's creating bad habits, need to change it. Um, this is working great, I need to continue it. You need to constantly, with that animal, be evolving your methods and sit and think, okay, this is working, but maybe there's a better way to do it. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you can ask other people and research, sometimes you just have to come up with stuff on your own. A lot of times I share, because a lot of stuff I do is unique, I don't really have other mink people I can ask. Right. I don't have other, other reptile people, I, I, I guess I have, well, you got Some me. I, I'd love Some to base. keep in touch with you, buddy. But I mean, as far as like hunting, like how, yeah. how how do I take him hunting? What do I hunt for? Like things like that. I mean, psh, I don't know. <laughs> I could get you, I could help you get him to come back. That's about it. Yep. And that's like the highest level reptile people can really help me with. So I've got to apply other um, um, specialties. Other what, what's the word? Not specialties. Um, techniques. Not techniques. But yeah, I, you know, I've got to apply other methods that come from other other disciplines. That's the word I was looking for. Other disciplines. You've got falconry. You've got dog trainers. You've got horse trainers. You've got the things I've learned and done in the past with mink. And you say, okay, what in all these conglomerate of animal experiences I've had or other people have had can I apply to the raptor? And the number one thing that it always keeps going back to is falconry. Hmm. People are like, oh, yeah, you know, um, it's kind of funny. People get really agitated when I compare them to a dinosaur. Dinosaur, dinosaur birds. dinosaurs are birds. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah, not yeah. reptiles, they're birds. They're not. Dude, he's the most bird-like freaking thing Absolutely. I've ever dealt with. Absolutely. So wait, okay. So if if uh, uh, dinosaurs are bird-like and he's bird-like, then he's dinosaur-like. Dude, right. shut up. Exactly. Like, no, you're right. He's very much like working with uh, what's called an occipiter. They're kind of a low level on the intelligence and reaction the, kind of the way they deal with the world, uh, bird of prey. So like goshawks, cooper's hawks, sharp shins, those are occipiters and they're kind of the low ring of, of intelligence and, and kind of, uh, they're very, very instinctual, very, very reactionary. And man, everything about him describes that. And I don't want to say his intelligence is low. That's actually pretty high to compare him to a bird of prey, right? right. Compared to what most people would think, oh yeah, they're pretty dumb. I would say he's actually a couple notches above an occipiter, okay. in my opinion. He picks things up faster. You could see that he he learns a concept. He learns, oh, hey, this is what we're doing. He'll pick that up way faster than an occipiter. Um, and he, he will uh, notice 
uh, patterns very, very quickly. Wow. Oh, hey, this guy feeds me in front of the fireplace. Back in the winter, I'd, I'd work him in the front room. This guy feeds me in front of the fireplace. He'd go sit over the fireplace. Just dude, waiting. Dude, I'm ready. Like, cool. like he picked up on things a lot faster than a sipiter. So I would say similar to an sipiter, but a little bit higher level. Cool. So. Well, listen, man, I think we have just gotten a heap of information. Uh, you're really passionate about what you're doing, and that's what I love. Uh, just seeing him, how he interacts with his dog, with his mink, and now with raptor, and not to mention your children. You're, like, you're really, you're good, man. Uh, it's really been amazing watching him today. And thanks for letting me come in here and just uh, oh, yeah. kind of barge in during the middle of the week. I'm in the middle of like, the Harkin family vacation, but I knew if I'm coming to Salt Lake area, I had to meet the mink man, Joe. Thank you so much. Yeah. Go check him out. If you guys are interested and want to follow along with what he's doing with Raptor and see the progression, head on over to Joseph the Mink Man on YouTube or just type in Mink. His name and his channel will come up. And as always, like and subscribe, please, for me. And I'll see you guys again real soon. We got a long ride back to Florida. We got to get moving. See you guys.